Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 22nd, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Now with Eye Contact Plus, only for $4.99 uh, a month. Oh my goodness. Only on Zoom. <laughs> Or what, YouTube. Yeah, Eye uh, Contact Plus, only available in select regions. There you go. Ask, ask your provider about Eye Contact Plus. Anyway, continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the, middle of the Bible Belt, there's over a 1, thousand, eleven hundred of us in, in the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's your topic today? All right, so I got it phrased kind of in a tongue-in-cheek way, but I believe in it. Uh, it's called, quote, without the afterlife, dot, 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 insert here, exclamation point, quote. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a fun one because I'm sure if you have been in the secular circles long enough, you've heard, if you've ever had an engagement with someone who is of the religious persuasion, well, if there's no afterlife, then blah, 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 blah. Blank, and, blank, blank. Line, I believe. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to go over some of the examples that we've heard, and I think it'll be cool to dive into it. And we even have a guest drop into the show and get his thoughts as well. Yep. But before we delve into it, Larry, how you been? Wanted to love to check in with you. Uh Doing great. I'm loving this nice moderate weather. Um, nice. Been cleaning house a lot lately. Uh, my daughter's boyfriend is coming to stay with us for a little bit from the other side of the of the Medi the Atlantic. He's, oh, the other uh, side of the Atlantic. Yeah, from the Netherlands. Wait, there's air, there's landmass on the outside. And, Wait, America and people and people so like East America. <laughs> what in the world? What is this? What is this? East America, West yeah. America. Yeah, wow, there's cool. Americas everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's having us make sure the house is just, just so, but, uh, she's wearing us out basically. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I know you love your family. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. uh, my thing was, uh, had a really fun engagement yesterday, uh, with a friend of mine from work. Uh, we went out to go play disc golf and rock climb and, um, the rock climbing is indoors because, you know, I'm still learning how to uh, properly apply grips. But if you can see my hands, for those who have the web streams, I am covered in calluses. So like I've been doing this for a while, at least, you know, about climbing for a year. And it's one of the new joys that I love sharing with other people. Um, I find like it's a really good balance between um, technique and strength. And as I'm getting stronger, I'm finding myself more capable. But I also love the idea of like controlling your body and using muscles that you don't really think about that are all about stabilizing yourself and getting to where you need to go. I think everybody should know how to run, climb swim and and uh uh, uh I, I think i already said climb but everyone should know how to run walk climb and swim like with proper technique i think it's part of your uh, i'll add one to that go for it sit and play video <laughs> uh, no defend yourself ah, I, yeah, i've got sure, a black yeah. belt in karate i did it for nine and years fight. i guess yeah maybe right. fight. and fight and yeah. the reason i say that is mm -hmm. i don't you don't need to go out and fight but you right. need to have the confidence that you can defend yourself yeah that's a so you don't live your life in fear it's a core it's a core component of what i think is to be uh, i agree and it's and, a great way to get fit absolutely so i'm sharing this with our friends at work i had a friend go out and we went rock climbing we had a good time we went out and played disc golf not one of the five tenants but still a fun thing to do that was great so you should know how to throw things right <laughs> with accuracy that's also one of the mm. primitive mindsets that feel really great yeah. but afterwards we went out and uh got some lunch before we called it a day and we went to a burrito place and while we're sitting down at the burrito place uh he starts showing me pictures of like his girlfriend and some activities he's happy hoping to have in the future with now that it's fall where there'll be apple picking 
and his girlfriend lives next to an Amish commune. And so the entire time he's just gushing about like Amish culture. And he's talking about like, yeah, she lives next to these Amish people. And they're like super Amish. They have no electricity. They, they don't use any tools. They, they're like super like, you know, uh, down to earth and they're just cooking. And I'm like, back wow. To nature. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. In the back of my head, whenever I hear Amish, you know, me, it's like, as just like my, my the atheist voice in my head is like, yeah. And they're they don't teach their kids to read in some cases they don't give them driver's license they have a very entrapment uh form of uh child rearing the their the females are essentially treated like property rampant sexual abuse that goes unreported like there's a lot of stuff going on there and so i dropped a little bit of that tongue-in-cheek i know rude unapropos of a person as nice as me but it changed the nature of the conversation because as soon as i mentioned that it was as if like I pulled a plug on a drain in a bathtub for him. And he went straight from talking about like, man, isn't Amish culture cool too? Yeah. And that's why I hate Amish culture too. It's so terrible. <laughs> like I know of all these people are trying to get out, but they can't. And Ohio's having like a really big problem with it. And they keep trying to like pay for, they keep demanding the city expand roads for their horses and that costs money, but they're not paying taxes on it. There's just these, all these crazy things. And the dogma is so terrible because it traps all these people on the inside. And I'm like, oh, whoa, maybe... I have found mm-hmm. a confident that I can talk to since we're both like, you know, engineers and scientists, yeah. like maybe we can yeah. both appreciate like, uh, but he, he's religious himself, conflict. right? He's a Christian. Now that's a great question. So I asked him that. Right. So, and I don't say, Hey, are you Christian? I just said like, where are you like religiously? If you have one of that, I, and I, and I apologized earlier for like, you know, talking badly about Amish in the event that he had Amish in his family or he was Amish or, you know, former stuff like that. And he's like, No, I'm not religious. I'm not religious, but I do believe in a spiritual power that has control over the universe. Like when I look at the universe, I definitely do see some sense of order in, in the world. And I, in my mind, I'm like, that's a very vague, it's a very vague God claim. I imagine if I were to just talk to him about this for like about maybe a couple of minutes, I might be able to figure out what's the nature of his belief and how much faith he's putting or how much reliability he's putting into it. So I asked him like, how did you come to the conclusion that there's a supernatural being that's in charge of everything? And he's like, I don't know. I just assume, I just (laughs) assume I'm like, is that, so you're assuming he's literally telling me he just assumed. I'm like, is that a reliable way then to come to a true conclusion? He's like, no. And I'm like, then why do you believe it? And he's like, well, it just makes me feel comfortable, but yeah, I don't really put a lot of stock into that. But I, in my mind, I have like family, and if there was no afterlife, then my life would have no meaning. And so, like that was the next step. So he's not believing in his supernatural God because it makes him, uh, well, it, to an extent, it does make him comfortable. But he's not believing it because of a disregard right. of the Big Bang theory or anything like that. He's mm-hmm. doing it because. He needs to have the comfort of the idea of an afterlife because it gives value to his life. Well, so, I'm, I'm sure a lot of that is that, that he would see it, the people who have passed before him again mm-hmm. sometime in the future. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to dwell on that and even make it like the topic of the show. If there was no afterlife, then blank. Because I know you've heard religious people say the same thing, too. And like, what would be good responses and how can you move forward in a conversation like this? So, Larry, I know you, I see you typing right now, but I do want to ask you this. Have you ever had anyone <laughs> ask you or have you won, anyone tell you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 set no up booths, like. I set up booths to talk to believers, you know, it, and I don't call them over. I don't walk the streets, you know, handing out flyers. Mm. I, I set up a booth and says, talk, ask an atheist if they want to talk to me, they wander over and they talk to me. It's yeah. totally voluntary. And I yep. certainly don't knock on their doors. Yeah. <laughs> So they come over and they talk, and, and a lot of the times they'll say, if there's no afterlife, if there's no heaven, then what's the point of living? And it just, it really shocks me because it, it's like they ha- they are not capable of, of supplying their own purpose for their life, which is where purpose really comes from. Uh, you go to college because you want to, because you have a, a, a it gives you a brighter future in, the fu- in, in your life. Mm. Uh, you do things. Uh, like you pick up a hobby because you enjoy it and it, it gives you uh maybe you like to darn or, or make socks or something, you know, it gives you something to work for. You like climbing walls. Yeah. It, make that your purpose. It doesn't matter. You set your own purpose. The value is that and, you can do it yourself. Right. And the beauty of it is you don't have to have just one. 
mm -hmm. you can change them at any time you want to. Exactly. Yeah. It's and it makes and for a multifaceted life and a multifaceted uh, skill set going down uh, through your life. Along with that is not only can you select a bunch of different ones, but you know different people can select different versions and you can have conversations with them. You can talk to them. And so you told me before that you had studied karate. There might be mm -hmm. some people who studied Taekwondo. I've studied Taekwondo. There might be some people who studied different disciplines and oh, you can sure. get those people in the same room. And even though we have different, you know, disciplines and way of, of learning how to defend ourselves, we can have a deep appreciation for the amount of discipline it took for us to get, you know, competent <laughs> in our select yeah. disciplines and talk about them in a really meaningful and passionate way. Right. And, and I, I really like to go off on this because it's, it, I studied uh, my version of karate. Um, it was Ishinur karate. Uh, it, it not only gave me the confidence that I can defend myself if I needed to, mm. but er, in everyday life, I have balance and coordination and, mm. and you know, the, the skills that it gives me a, a good, strong heart for all the exercise, a low body mass of weight. Uh, fat, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just uh, the fighting aspect of it. You added value to your own life through That's right. your own mm -hmm. vocation, through your own mm -hmm. endeavor. But right. don't you feel terrible that you wasted all that time because there's no afterlife? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, no. It, it, you know, what makes something precious? Right. The the lack of that one thing or the 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 rarity of that one thing. Diamonds are, are precious natural mm. diamonds because mm. they're rare gold is precious because it's rare the more life you have if you have an afterlife that goes on eternity and if you think that your death is just a what is it change change of address right then it's not precious to you mm. matter of fact how many how many movies have you seen where the the religious people say uh kill the heathen etc um you know because it you know let God sort it out. It's mm. it's demeaning to the value of life itself. I had this, I had the similar point that I brought up with my friend. Cause when he said, if, so remember if to, going back in the conversation, I asked him, why did he believe in a God? Because at first it was just something he assumed. We realized that assumptions are assumptions are not a reliable way to reach a true conclusion. So I asked him then like, what really is bringing him to the belief that there's a supernatural being that brought order to the universe. And he disregarded the argument of order which is because he was an engineer he probably knew where that was going to go uh there there's in fact uh so but he went to afterlife gives my life value therefore it must be true and while that's an argument from comfort just because something makes you comfortable doesn't necessarily make it true i did want to talk about a comment he made where he said if i don't have the afterlife my life has no value or no meaning and my thought process was how, what does that mean? Like if it was true that there was no afterlife, would you just stand in a parking lot and wait to die? Was, is the food that you're eating no longer have taste? The video games that you planned on playing later this evening, would you just not play them if the, the things weren't true? Would you break up with your girlfriend? Well, well so, you... Far you, you, so far you've only mentioned the hedonistic things, but there are other purposes like your family, providing for your family, providing uh, a, you know, a home for uh, your family to live in, uh, mm. you know, providing you for, your, for loved ones is, can be a purpose of life too. Right. Um, <clears throat> I, I was just wondering, like, would you stop being friends with me too? Like I, 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 all these times I'm asking him all these questions, including the ones that you brought up Larry. He's like, no, 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 no. And then of course I brought up the other idea of like, you know, the idea that my life has value is because it's limited. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way, how I think about it um, is, because my life has a limitation of length, of time, duration, that's what gives every moment value to me. So if anything, it's without an afterlife that gives my life value because I I know that this is the life that I have and I want to enjoy and, and, and contribute and build a legacy as much as possible. I have a weird concept about my life right now. It's not so much, I know my life will end. However, I do have an ability with my life to make a lasting impact that will last out beyond even what my time on this earth is. And that is through my impacts on the next generation, maybe the jokes that I tell, maybe the science that I uh, enable and publish, or the work that I do to help build technology platforms for people. Um, 
the volunteer work that I can do, the skills that I can develop and train other people in, like I can have a lasting impression that outlives my physical body. And what I'm far more invested in is building that legacy than I am with my life. Like my life is essentially just the tool to build my legacy. And I think when I think about it that way, it's like, okay, well then that's great because I get to decide what this tool is gonna be used for. I get to decide what value it can offer to this world. And even if this tool is gone, I still have all these amazing projects that outlasted uh, outlasted it. And in my opinion, mm -hmm. that gives me so much value. And I was talking about it with this guy and I said, listen, you give me value just by the ability of us having this friendship and talking and, and being able to do stuff together. like. This is cool. Like, don't say that, don't, or don't give the, I don't want you to end this conversation with the impression that you have no value without an afterlife because you've demonstrated that you do. In fact, I can even let you know that you had a good impact of value on me. Um, and so overall, I, I just felt like that aspect of our conversation was actually pretty positive by the end of it. Um, though I do think a lot of people put themselves into a rut where, if there is no afterlife, it could be very depressing for them because then they have to start considering, oh man, well then death is going to happen no matter what, you know, like uh, my friends are going to die no matter what, my family's going to die no matter what. That 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 offers such a sad twist for them if they've never had a chance to deal with it or frame it in a proper way. What do you think, Larry? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, there was a, Oh, who was it? Julia. Can't remember her last name, but she did a, a, a routine where she said that now that she knows that she's an atheist and she knows that she's eventually going to die mm. and her friends are going to die. She also has to, in her mind, go back through all the people who have died previously and say goodbye to them because she won't see them again. Oh, that's an interesting way of going. Yeah. Back. Anyway. Keep simple. Oh, <laughs> uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Good. I'm going to I'm going to go get my headphones so I can hear you guys better because okay. it, it won't let me put you on speaker, which is that was an interesting 10 minutes of technical nonsense. I guess <laughs> <laughs> I'll okay. let you guys get on with it for two and then I'll I'll be right with you. All right. Cool. So wanted to wrap up the conversation then. So after we had the discussion on the afterlife, I did. We did ask him like beyond afterlife. Now that we realize like your life still has value. What's still bringing you to the God belief is like. Not really much. I honestly, I'm not even that religious to begin with. None of my family's religious. I was wondering like, hey, is, is it your family? Is it your girlfriend that's also religious? Because I can understand a person like in this area, you know, being invested in a community that is very religious that they would have to, you know, put it up the front. It's like, no, all my family's not religious except my grandma. And we're basically just waiting for her to pass on before we can just be open about the fact that we none of us believe in God. But I'm not an atheist or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. I'm an agnostic, not an atheist. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, so, I'm not sure either, but I'm still an atheist. Now. It, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So without getting to, without pulling out my atheist dictionary, I just asked him, so what is, what is a person that doesn't believe in a God called? What is someone that doesn't believe in a God called? And he like paused and he thought about it. He's like, well, I guess it's an atheist. It's like, yeah, I'm one too. I've been one for like about, you know, I say 12 years out openly now. And I told him a little bit of my, my story and my background coming into uh, my, my non-belief. And I said, you know, I'm framing it as a, not as a statement that God does not exist or that the afterlife doesn't exist. Like, I'm not saying that. And he was really receptive to that. What I'm saying is I don't know. And by empowered, empowered by the fact of I'm ignorant of whether or not a God exists, I'm not believing in him because my default position isn't to believe things until they're, or until they're proven. Disproven. My position <laughs> is to not believe something until it is proven so like or at I'll, least at least so that we have evidence for it because proof right. is very rare yeah 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 thank you for clarifying that it was a little bit of a cumbersome mm -hmm. sentence but i took a i took yeah. a coin that was on the table it was actually a bottle cup but let's just call it a coin <laughs> I put it on the back of my hand i was like listen i don't know if this is heads or tails do you know if it's heads or tails he's like it's heads i'm like hey you might be right but are you guessing and he says yeah i am guessing it's like and because you're guessing, I can't be convinced that you're 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 right because you might actually be right, but you're using a really unreliable method to get to that conclusion. Right. Until you have a more reliable method, like actually looking at the coin, then I can be more persuaded 
at looking at your answer and being like, oh, well, you have a very justified reason for believing that. But until then, until we can like have uh, an experience where, you know, God can come down and eat this, what eat burritos with us and, and, t- and prove that he exists, I'm not going to be persuaded to believe in the God because I don't know if that God exists or not. I don't know which of the gods right. have been claimed to exist or right. not. Right. And so I don't know which afterlife might exist or not. So until right. then, I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying you got more work to do, people who say that it does. For sure. Before for sure. I believe you too. And that's and what we, it is. And we've got a, a guest that had just joined us. Welcome, Keith Simple. Do you have hi, Larry, a, hi, are you? a DJ rolling? name or a hi, hi. Uh, podcast name that you'd like to go by on the podcast? Uh, it's just my name, Keith. So Keith okay. Simple uh, yeah. came up with a simple truth that seemed like an obvious name for the yeah. podcast. Yeah. I love your accent. <laughs> uh, where, oh, where, where are hi. you from? Uh, I'm from a little town called Larn in Northern Ireland. Um, Welcome. I live in Chicago land now, like I'm in, in the burbs of Chicago, but oh, uh, I moved Chicago. over here in 2006. <laughs> you I know where Forest here. Park is? Oh, yeah, I've been there many times. Yeah, I, I, I grew up there. I, I lived there until I was like 11. Okay, I'm like Naperville, but, Plainfield area, so just, mm-hmm. you know, 40 minutes northwest-ish. Sure. Well, welcome yeah. to the show. Yeah, keep welcome. <laughs> thanks for having me. You came well, I've learned that... I've learned that my computer does not like Zoom. It wouldn't let me use Zoom anymore. I'm like, oh, no. Okay, that's interesting. Good timing, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How about this? Let's go to a quick break, and then we come back, and we'll do a full introduction and and figure out more about you. Sound cool? Awesome. Sounds good, guys. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tech, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now and have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table, or if it's pretty outside, outside on the deck. And you can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and find an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, we got a new guest. Let's talk about we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith Simple. How are you, my friend? I am good, guys. It's a pleasure to be on with you. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Well, Absolutely. Welcome. I understand I'm a little, you're... little rough from the night before. I'm a singer for a living, so uh, mm-hmm. this is my... Uh, Your vocals. <laughs> Sundays and Mondays are my weekends, essentially, or Mondays and Tuesdays, whatever. But um, but yeah, it'll, maybe it'll make me sound like I know more about what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. What's the name of your group? <laughs> uh, it's just Simple, my last name. Um, I have two bands. S-E-M-P-L-E. Yes. So it's kind of everything's a play on words off the word simple with an I, essentially. We, you know, we, um, we played, oh, this is kind of funny. We played, I'm sorry to say, we played Trump Tower last night. Oh no, did you? (laughs) And I did not know that that was the, we played for this client before, but I had no idea until we were booked like six months in. That yeah. that's where they decided to have the event the venue so i was yeah. i was locked in i was like you know what I, I i this is not something where i can just say like screw you guys i'm never playing that place type of a thing i had to just go do it now it was a great show it was beautiful it's, it's a beautiful hotel but you know the whole time i'm just like ugh, i'm in i'm in like evil territory here in my head you know <laughs> it just didn't feel right even though it was a great show i mean it's at the end of the day, it's a building and your, 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 your position and, and vocation is to bring joy to people. Right. So that's it. Yeah. I mean, nobody would have known. It was a fantastic show. Right. It, in fact, it was a really fantastic show. Um, our, our band is all about energy and, and, hmm. you know, and real like high energy performances and that's what we're known for. And mm-hmm. I kind of jump <laughs> about like an idiot for a few hours and get everybody uh-huh. involved and, hmm you know, put the microphone in people's faces and stuff. And and it was, it was a huge success. I'm just like, you know, yeah. well, good. You I, you're, get on you're also it, you know? an atheist, I believe. Is that right? 
Oh, very much so. Yes, I, I'm one of the lucky ones, I call myself, because I've never had a supernatural belief. Ever. Is that, um, and were you raised in the Ireland? Like, is that common or like? That's very common. Yeah, I was only, there was only one, one Christian in 10 of us. Wow. So that's why it's so weird. This is why I started my new podcast here. The simple truth is because I've moved here in 06 and I just was like blown away. I felt like I'd moved back like Marty, Marty fly, you know, 1955. Like I was like, wait a minute, what is going on here? It's meant yeah. to be the, the country of, you know, <laughs> hopes and dreams and stuff. And I'm like, if it, but people still believe in angels here. Like, I mean, what well, is going on? We have extreme religious freedom here. So we, you know, there are hardly any laws that, that will limit a religious order, religious practice. And if they, if there are laws that limit it, they're quickly challenged. So it's like religion run rampant in this country. Yeah. And it's I'm, ironic because it's, it's the only secular one of one of the only secular constitutions on the planet. And it's ironic that somewhere that actually got it right in the documents, even at all this time ago, they they got it right, knowing that the whole point is to try and not establish a government religion. Mm -hmm. They've basically done everything else in name other than that, than officially say it. And um, mm -hmm. I just interviewed um uh, Monica Miller, she used to be the uh, head of the main lawyer at the ACA, uh, at the, or sorry, the AHA, the American Humanist Association. So she's been at, at the Supreme Court and argued all these points. And just hearing the, the fact that there were some arguments they wouldn't even take up because they knew they would lose, even though they were uh, on a, on a uh, uh, you know, in, in a law sense, they were 100% in the right. They just knew they would lose because any uh, any slightly conservative judge would go, no, even though you, it just blows my mind in this country. So it's not too much of a surprise for me because, like, there's a lot of things the founding fathers overlooked when they were making their original documents, right? How to treat mm -hmm. women, how to treat people who aren't, who are darker than khaki. How let's just wait. <laughs> uh a lot of things fell through the crack but over time we were able to like make up a lot of ground but we're still in that progress and the way how i think about the work that we're doing even today is you know when we are vocal about atheism when we're vocal about about our secular pursuits and how word we don't eat babies and you know what you might have heard from your pastor about us isn't necessarily accurate and let's have a conversation about intellectual honesty and genuine ignorance and doubt and why these things are actually useful for figuring out how to get to true truths right or like yes, useful, useful models. Like these are the the second enlightenment that will get us to where we need to go. And we're all participating in that. Musically, yeah. podcasts, conversations, one-on-one -on -one engagements. And I'm happy to be a part of that because I feel like that, as we were talking about earlier in the show, does bring value to my life. It gives me a sense of purpose to have these kinds of engagements with folks and to meet new people too. So Keith, uh, you know, I, I still am, am desperate to learn more about your backstory and like what got you to that cool logo in the background and the awesome Pokemon tats that you, you're rocking right now. <laughs> what you might you mind telling us about yourself? Yeah, the, these are actually, it's these are all um, like famous bands that I love. Like this is actually Pink Floyd. Okay. Um, this is Megadeth right here. There's Very a cool. British band called Thunder that I love. And then there's a band called Dream Theater that I've had the privilege of becoming friends with now. Uh, they are one of my favorite bands. Anyway, uh, and then there's my... Uh, Invisible pink unicorn, you might appreciate. Oh. Okay, I see it. I don't yeah. say anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've been an atheist my whole life. I was lucky that my dad is actually a master's uh, in geology. He's a, uh, you know, uh, and he has a master's in philosophy. So he's a very, um, nice. you know, I've been lucky to have that bug about knowledge. And my dad made me think not about, do not that I want an answer. I want the right answer or mm -hmm. what's going to get me closest to the right answer. I know mm -hmm. um, Matt Dillahunty always says, you know, I want to know as few false things as possible and as many true things. And that's right. been my, my goal since 14. So um, I, I started reading the Bible a lot at 13 and 14, not from a, any place of religiosity, but from more of a curiosity and in, the problem is in the UK, there is no separation of church and state, right? So it's, you know, Church of England or in our country, right. it's mostly Presbyterian. Right. And my headmaster 
principal was actually a lay preacher as well. So it was like, if somebody got sick, he would go and preach. And he, he walked in one day and he saw me reading the Bible in lunchtime. And he's like, Ooh. what are you doing, Keith? And he goes, <laughs> really? he goes, you know, you know, you don't believe any of this stuff and you give me a hard time about it. And I was like, well, sir, how can I give you a hard time about it? If I don't know all the arguments for and against it. And, and I was mm -hmm. like, do you want me to get into, you know, a few here that I'm having a problem <laughs> with? Let's just yeah. say I just read Deuteronomy. <laughs> I've got a few notes, you know. Really? <laughs> and, uh, that's, the one chapter, no, yeah. that's one chapter everyone falls asleep through. They're yeah. Like, Tyrone, I'm guessing you have a few problems with Exodus. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> so uh, yeah. And that's basically what happened. And, and the, we had a rule in our school because it's obviously Northern Ireland. So the weather sucks. Like the weather is terrible. So it's, Either if it's good weather, you're outside mm -hmm. in, a, in a break time or a lunch time. And so I was in reading a book in a room and, he, and he's like, I'll just go outside, Keith. And I'm like, I really want to study this. I'm interested in this whole theology thing. And he kind of just like relented over time because he's seen I wasn't just being facetious or silly. I was being honest. And then by the time I got to about 18, I was actually having on stage debates at school with with like ministers and like moderators of entire religions in the country, you know, our, our, my minister, as it would be said, was actually the moderator of the entire Presbyterian the, were, Northern Irish church. So this was Protestants. Uh, yeah. Um, it's funny yeah. because Northern Ireland is mostly Protestant and mm -hmm. that's where the whole big divide. Yeah. No, it's funny Catholics because and, the Catholics are the ones who generally don't want you to read the Bible. They say, we'll tell you what it means. You know, yeah. but the Protestants broke away from that and had their own idea that reading the Bible is what you need to do. And it's kind of funny yeah. that he would come down on you for not, I mean, for wanting to read it. Yeah, I mean, I am lucky mm -hmm. in that the, the, the British version of Presbyterianism and Church of England and these type of religions is so watered down that it's one of these kind of like, my mom, for example, was religious in the sense of she has a belief in supernatural things like gods and souls and hells and these kind of like the standard kind of religious beliefs but it's all very wishy-washy and kind of like oh, just be nice Keith you know just be good <laughs> you know because yeah. maybe God's watching and maybe you know you want to be nice and and if you asked her she believes her her mom is in heaven somewhere right now and so on you know this type of but it but in no way did she ever like bring me up as a parent in a kind of like do this because Jesus is watching kind of a of a of a top down feel it was a very much mm -hmm. i want you to grow up to be a well-rounded you know person and luckily you know my dad being the way he was he's been an atheist his whole life and he would not ever really say much till i was older till i was about 16 and then he'd be like he would say how he really felt and i was like i knew it but uh, but then i was annoyed at him for things like dad why did you let me get baptized why did you let me go to church every week for, you know, till I was like 12? And he's like, I could just, I just wanted an easy life. Like I just wanted, you know, like your mom to be happy and that made uh -huh. my mom happy. <clears throat> and so he was balancing more sort of the day to day at the moment life than, but did he, I'm glad did he, he did. Lay because... on, did he lay on the accent a little bit more just to like make him seem more, more amenable to like the, the Irish charm? He's like, Oh, <laughs> I just want to make you happy. That's all. That's all. all He's like, oh, dad. All right. Fine. So cool. Tyrone, that's funny you say that because my band members and everybody here makes fun of me because every time I do an impression of someone that said something, yeah, even if it was you, Tyrone, you would yeah. have that same accent. Ah. So I go, so Tyrone said this, you know, he goes, I, I don't know what's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My default's always an Australian accent. I'd be like, hey, mate, there you go. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I did have this question. Um, I yeah. think it's ideal. And it's not so much that you, you were raised as an atheist that makes it ideal. It's like you had parents that weren't, you know, absolutely motivated to indoctrinate you. That's, that's my mindset is the ideal mindset that I have is you were able to approach theology with a mindset that wasn't already indoctrinated into believing that what you were reading was true and that you yes. already had like a fundamental, a fundamental appreciation for how to understand things without any bias from, from religion. And I would say even from like a secular point of view too, because you were simply, I'm a curious person. 
I know how to read and write. I know my parents love me. I can understand physics to an extent. Now let's read the Bible. Oh my gosh, how does anyone believe this? This doesn't make any sense. And exactly, that is, that's how I would love. That would be my ideal for how most people would approach religion. Like after they've already had a, a semblance of understanding how reality works until like their late teens, and then show them a book and be like, here's a holy book that a bunch of people believe over there. You're like, well, there's nothing true in here. That, or how did you establish that? I feel like you're literally reading text from my mind right now. Ooh. Like you just said a sentence that I, I just had the pleasure, the great pleasure last week of interviewing um, the friendly atheist, Hammond Mehta, who is doing amazing things for the atheist community. I don't know if you know him or whatever, but he he has the um, a bunch of books out about being a young atheist. And I said to him that I honestly believe if you didn't teach religion, till 16 mm. and like as in you weren't allowed to teach your kids it or whatever you know imagine or imagine a world like that religion would be all religions would be on the same level as flat earthers or below I, here would be, here would be my uh, alternative appreciation for it like if i learned about religion at the same time that i could play assassin's creed right like when i could like delve into a world of fiction and be like oh wow tolkien and gnomes and these are cool. Star Wars. Oh, Jedi are awesome. They could use force power. Like I can appreciate it as a mythology. And then I can take some of the, like the learning lessons of like, Hey, what would Luke Skywalker do? I know he's not a real person, but I was really motivated when he did X, Y, Z. And that's going to give me a little bit of strength and I'll go on with the rest of my day. I'm not going to force people to be a Jedi. I'm just going to say, Hey, I really like these movies. I like these characters. Maybe I'll write a nice story like that one day too. Like I can take good things from fake things and move you forward. Just made me picture somebody wearing a bracelet saying, what would L S do? You know, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, someone make that. Someone make that. But like, honestly, <laughs> like if I could appreciate the Bible as a work of fiction, I might be able to still pull all the virtues that people are using. Don't steal, be nice, respect your parents. I can take those. That's still, these are still deepities that are valuable to an extent, but I don't have to take the baggage of, by the way, Philistines are evil. Don't trust Jewish people. Uh, Samaritans are of a majority terrible people. There's only one good one, that good Samaritan. We all know that one. Like all these others, these witches are real. Bats are birds. Like you don't have to take any of that stuff. You can yeah, just take yeah. the good stuff and just be like, hey, okay, what's the yeah. next religion I can take good things from? Tyrone, do you think the majority of people, I honestly don't think the majority of people, like even a good friend of mine here that, I, that was helping me say all this up here um like i'm not the most technical person at times unless it's music related hmm. and um he um he didn't know a lot of things that even as a pretty well knowledgeable i would say more knowledgeable than most when i was talking to him i was i was saying like well you know i would maybe give more credence to the whole jesus story and stuff if we had any first-hand accounts if we had any first-hand authors, if we knew who wrote the Gospels, and he stopped me and he's like, what do you mean who wrote? We know who wrote the Gospels. It even says it, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And I'm like, oh, come on, come on. I was like, I wasn't mad at him or anything, but he's like, do you not, do you not, are you not aware of that? Like, the, we uh, actually have no idea who wrote those. Yeah. And then I said, what about the other Gospels that didn't make it in there? Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary, Gospel Judas. of Peter. Judas and too. actually, I've read all of those as much as they have of them. And Tom, the actual gospel of Thomas is the closest thing they can date to mm. Jesus. And that's about 70 AD. So you've got 40 years of your, you know, like you can imagine your granddas sitting around with their pipes, talk, telling stories about, oh, I remember Jesus. You know, they were probably drunk and high and they were like, oh, remember that time <laughs> he walked on water? Sure. When really it was <laughs> like, really, he just really quickly swam out to a boat or something. You see right. what I mean? So like he didn't realize those things. And I'm like, I can't blame him for that. But I'm like, I said, pull open your, any, any Bible or let's pull it up. And I, and he, we pulled it up. The very first thing that came up was the, um, the sort of like a preface at the start of all the Disclaimer. Bibles, which is, although they attribute this to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we do not actually know who wrote these. And we know it's written as if they do, but it looks like Mark um, is a, is a plagiarism of Matthew and John and look and so on. And it's like, they don't really know who wrote this. And I'm like, we're, we're starting from a level of atheists in general, when asked or any survey shows that atheists always score higher on religious and by biblical knowledge. 
And yeah. <clears throat> you know that old saying that, uh, uh, you know, you give, the, give me the child till, till seven and I'll give you the man. That is all religion. It, it's so embedded by then. Like, I, I'm lucky that my, my wife is not religious at all. And I mean, like, not only not religious, but couldn't care less about the whole concept. And I love that. I'm like, wait a minute, you're not worried about what happens to you when you die or anything like that? She's like, eh, what can I do about it? And I'm like, exactly. But still, as an atheist, it can be an existential dread of I'm going back to I'm going back to another 13 billion years of of not knowing I exist is kind of where I'm at when I think about my end of days, you know. But so she lets us parent, we parent very neutrally. I don't actually teach them any kind of, I want you to believe this. What I teach them is, what do you think? And if you give kids the, what do you think? They go, hmm. Like, perfect example was, you know that um, elf on a shelf thing? What? You heard of that? No. Yeah. Okay. It's a kid's thing where an elf, you have a little toy elf, and every Christmas, every morning, Every night, the parents go and set him up in funny situations. Like we would get little like Hershey kisses and have them like pooing over the to over the toilet and stuff. Like, Larry, you know little... about this? Yeah. Is this so? Every day I'm on this show. I my uh, my daughter culture. used to do that. <laughs> I learn something about I'm, white people every day. This is great. I'm just so glad that I, I I said elves something Tyrone doesn't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to my next black friend and be like, "Do you know they got elves on show? White people was like, "Yeah, man, they've been telling me stuff. They let that leak. I got it recorded. I'll tell you." I'll tell you. <laughs> That's funny. So we we have the you know the elf on the shelf, and we would do funny things like leave a trail of like toilet paper around the house, and then it would lead to him sitting there over like the sink with like loads of Hershey's chocolate kisses in the sink and he there's a you leave a note uh -huh. and it's written as if it's him yep. and it'll say sorry I just couldn't get to the bath to the toilet in time or some something uh -huh. but he said don't worry I put <clears throat> chocolate here you go so that's that's right but no nope, that's a thing now, it's a real thing yeah it's a real thing now I'm I was right. very I was kind of like bah humbug about it because I'm like Ugh, can we really do this because the kids are going to actually think this is really for real but all, all I needed to say was, all I needed to say to my girls was, well, uh, what do you, you know, they were like, well, how does he do that? And I'm like, well, what do you, what do you think? And it only took them like five minutes to go, wait a minute, you guys just do this when we go to bed, right? Right. Same well, with funny. this fairy and everything else. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is you ask them, what do they think? But in the Bible, it says, lean not on your own understanding. So, you know, like they don't want you, they don't want you to think. It's you terrible. Know, so, it's literally, as I was about to say, that's some Darth, but he, Sith, you know, evil yeah. Vader stuff that you put in a yeah. book that's supposed to be about good people. It's like, don't mm -hmm. don't read the fine text and just give me your children and don't ask questions. Like that's mm -hmm. the those are actual lines. Are you saying that the Bible is the original Apple? Um, do you agree to these terms and conditions? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I've always felt like the Bible is if if Trump was God, it would be his autobiography. It, it is a book written by a crazy dictator who thinks he's awesome. And at every step of the way, you're like, this isn't a good thing. But if you give it to enough <laughs> psycho fans, they'll be like, yeah, have you read that book? No, well, you should read it. Okay, so, maybe we will. We just like hanging out and wearing these shirts and hats. So Tyrone, if you're okay with this, because I'm, I, I'm fascinated um, by i want to ask you how you came because obviously i don't know you guys well yet or anything but i want to ask you offline because i don't i know most of your listeners have probably heard no, I, your story many times but i want to know what how you got to where you are in your thought process but maybe we could do that offline just so we can actually if you'd like to on. come back on the show again we'd, we'd be happy to to go over it or um yeah like i think it'd be a good topic because yes uh, our listeners you know we've gone over this several times but we've been on the air for six years we we touch on it occasionally and we have new audiences every week so you know i think yeah, it's a good idea to go into it whenever you want to sure out of all my black friends i have one friend that is an atheist and i mm. wouldn't even say would openly say they are mm. and it drives me nuts because and forgive me if this is you know white guy talking about this like shoot me but um i feel like the irony of some of the most devout and religious people in America are actually the the black um, Presbyterian kind of uh, 
denominations, you know, and I'm like, it just, it's like, if of all the people who should hate it more than anyone, yeah. it's the people that have been subjugated by it. Right. By let, me, <clears throat> let me throw something else out too. Religion is about beating a sense of humanity out of a person. If you look at someone who is deeply indoctrinated in the religion, they don't think they're a good person. They think they're a terrible human being. They think they're substandard. They think they're subservient. They think they need a shepherd. They need a savior. There are something wrong with them. And if you are grown in a culture where that is both what you're told by your holy power and how society treats you as a human being to the point where because you're Because of the, property, the teachings. That's yeah. not an irony. That's a reaction. That is a direct input output and how you can develop an entire culture that has that mindset. And even when you legally take away the chains, the mindset's still there. It's still affecting. And that should be a, a, a red flag as well as a clear indication of how terrible religion can be when you subjugate an entire people for such a long period of time. Thankfully, there's also some other good stories too. Uh, abolitionists were largely motivated by uh, humanity and Christian th and, and Christianity thinking. So a lot of heroes were were for for abolishment of slavery were religious, and that's how a lot of people get black people get their last names. A lot of the leaders in black movements were church organizers, which allowed a lot of different communities to come together so they could focus a message in the same way how you can focus an army around, hey, those are bad people because my God said so. It's like, oh yeah, then we'll we'll help you kill those people. You can do the same thing for we need rights. And let's go to this church to be able to establish that because that's a good way to congregate and get people to work together. So as terrible as it seems, it has historically had very clear ties for why we are in the state that we are in today. And what only thing I'd love to just highlight is that everything that was good out of religion wasn't good because of religion. Our ability to have community, the cultures that we were able to provide to America and the rest of the world, none of that came from religion. That's stuff that came from us. And as soon as we begin to realize that and, and let that, you know, bifurcate for a period of time, we'll actually have a culture that is more free, in my opinion, to continue to contribute to society and, and can be beneficial to everybody than tying it to like dogma. But, you know, that's a hard thing to get into in more detail in like five minutes. But I think for it's a sure, fascinating that, concept. That was a fascinating five minutes. That's, that, that, that should be on a bumper sticker on the back of the truck, <laughs> what you just said. That, 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 was, that was so phenomenal. You like need just, a long red light to read that one. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 Vision Pet. Yeah. Uh, Keith, I know it's only been for a short time, but we loved having you on the show. If you're you're more than welcome to top the 10, it's not, it doesn't have to be next week. It'd be any time in the future. We typically have just an open invite for any of the people who've come on. And, and, and we do have an six or seven people that come in fairly regularly right yeah i yeah. would love Rotating to you guys cast. and i'll just do it as a kind of um anytime i'm not dead from the weekend i would <laughs> love to i mean i got home about 3 a.m so mm -hmm. you know it's a little little rough i mean if i don't have to sing or whatever in the next day or whatever then it right. makes it a little easier mm -hmm. but um you know but and those hotel loadouts are rough you know because you sure, yeah, finish yeah. at midnight or whatever and then from where you are to where you load out is like 18 floors and a hundred two or three hundred yards of push you know yeah. and i'm not the you biggest don't have roadies the for that <laughs> i do but um but we are all a team and i'm one of these guys sure. that like i like to see my you know my my employees basically seeing me do the work hmm. so like i when i arrive i pull down that trailer door and i'm lifting stuff out and in whether there's anybody there or not next time just pray and it'll fix itself that's like <laughs> Yeah. Well, that I do really have a few things I need to get fixed in that trailer. Maybe that, yeah. maybe yeah. that will uh, work. Uh, you know? yeah. Larry, thank you so, so much for doing this show. Thank you, Keith, for being on the show. Uh, Larry, I think we're getting close to the end. I, I, I want to hear what you would love to plug, Keith, uh, yeah. before we go into the next week. To give you an example, um, I would love for people to check out a lady named Anne Eskew. Anne Eskew, her last name, A-S-K-E-W, like ask ew. The reason why I bring her up is she is a famous um, martyr for Protestants. Protestants. She was a Protestant. She in the world where ca Protestantism was becoming a new thing, and everyone was a Catholic, and these people were like, "No, let's not listen to the Catholic Church. They're clearly evil." Uh, she was put on a rack and stretched out until her bones separated, was paralyzed, and then put on a stake and burned to the death. 
because of her belief. That was slightly different than the other alternative version of Christianity at the time. And I think to myself, man, that was only, you know, a couple hundred years ago compared to where we are now, where we have a host on the show that isn't not beyond not being Protestant, but is an atheist and can talk about his family and bring a lot of love and 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 sing songs at Trump Tower and stuff like that for like uh, yeah. all these different interactions with people. Like we've well, we have come such a long way. And I say, like, let's continue to, like, move forward with that, but also take a couple of moments to look back and not take for granted how far we have come. <laughs> So well, that's that, all. All I wanted to say about promotion wise is just that this, as you can see in the background, is my my podcast area here. The simple mm. truth spelled mm. like my name S E, and <clears throat> I just decided that I've always planned on doing this, and 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 obviously as a kind of oh, I hate the term, but like public figure in this area at least. And I you know I've been I was a top twenty contestant on The Voice and things like that. So I'm well known in the music circles, and I was like. Oh. I've never ever hid that I'm an atheist or that I'm a secularist or any of these things, but the majority of that never comes up in my interactions as a musician. So I'm like this, it's time for me now that I'm so um, doing so well in my music career. It's like, I want everybody to know, and I'm going to do what I can to let people see that that guy that you've really admired on the yeah. stage that you go and see week after week and month after month, and you see him, uh, do his thing and he's kind to all of his you know his uh, his fans and he takes pictures with everyone and he and all these things it's like this guy has been an atheist the whole time he's makes bernie look far right <laughs> and he's you know uh, that one of the people you've been taught to hate oh we're, we're on another time so uh, anyway all, all, I, all i want you guys to do is go to the simple truth or simpletruth.com or find us on any of the podcasts and maybe listen to my atheist episode. Nice. And if you like it, share it. Cause I'm determined to make a difference with this. And that's simple okay. truth. S E M P L E. So yes. 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 Okay. Thank you guys. Cool. Sure. Uh, just a reminder, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for digital free thought radio hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Hmm. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. everybody.